Although you won't find the word subitizing in the Kindergarten Common Core State Standards, it was definitely on the mind of the authors of the standards. After writing the Common Core, they subsequently wrote a series of documents called progressions to communicate to teachers the way in which the standards relate to one another within a grade level and also to uh, relate those standards to concepts in the grade level below and above and, and see how the concepts flow over time. The progressions document for counting and cardinality, which is where we currently are, specifically discusses subitizing and acknowledges its importance to arithmetic fluency, which is a goal we're probably familiar with. Uh, however, the term subitizing remains unfamiliar to many teachers, and for this reason we're going to take some time to address this important concept. In the progressions document that I just referenced, the Common Core authors describe two kinds of subitizing that have been identified in the research literature, and they relate this to an important progression for this age, which is from subitizing to single-digit arithmetic fluency. That statement's taken straight out of the progressions document. By that, they are identifying the very important role that subitizing plays in the development of meaningful math fact strategies. Perceptual subitizing is something that very young children are often capable of demonstrating, and there is some evidence to indicate that it could play a role in helping students develop cardinality. Conceptual subitizing takes this a step further by subitizing more than one quantity and then using that to determine a whole. So as such, you can see that conceptual subitizing, working with more than one addend, for example, could be very useful to building a meaningful foundation for arithmetic. And you will also see the role that visualization plays in the process of subitizing and how that can lead students to some powerful strategies. Even very young children often show a remarkable talent for recognizing small quantities without counting. Douglas Clements, who's well known for his research with young children's mathematical development, tells a story of a baby just six months old who has three cards in front of her face. The first card has one dot the second two dots, and the third three dots. When she hears three drum beats, her eyes move to the card with three dots. That seems really amazing to us, six months old. It turns out that this capacity we humans have is enormously useful uh, in the development of cardinality because a key aspect of cardinality is associating a number with a quantity as a whole group whereas counting is counting items individually in the one-to-one -one correspondence. So they have to shift between a focus on individual items and then stop at the last number word and refocus on the entire group. And that's, that's pretty difficult for many children in the first processes. So this idea that they can see a quantity as a group and associate a number word with it can be really helpful. The perceptual, the process of perceptual subitizing as I mentioned, typically involves a recognition of a known um, pattern, um, such as the finger patterns for a quantity of three is shown here. That can become very familiar to children, where the minute they see that finger pattern, they immediately think that's three. Also, simple arrangement of dots can draw students' attention to a quick perception of the quantity. Notice the dot arrangements that are here are very simple. The simplicity of the design is very important in early students, early learners, to help draw their attention to numerosity or to quantity. If, it, if the diagram was too busy or too complex, they'd attend to other items rather than the quantity. So we use these very simple diagrams to draw their attention to the numerosity. Now, most children that enter kindergarten should already be at a point where they can recognize the quantity of three at a glance without counting, but it turns out the perceptual subitizing is still well worth your attention as a kindergarten teacher because it can be used to foster conceptual subitizing, and conceptual subitizing is extremely useful to the development of meaningful arithmetic strategies. Children who've had quite a bit of experience playing games that use dice often get to the point where they just know what value they rolled without having to count the pips on the dice. This recognition of a familiar dot pattern can become part of a process by which you foster subitizing and also students' capacity to be observant about quantity. Notice the domino doubles that are shown here. It's interesting to show a domino like this to your students for a short time, like a quick image, and then ask them what they remember seeing. 
After listening students' memories, you can ask them if they have any ideas about how much that would be altogether. Often you will have a student in the classroom, or perhaps even several, who will be able to say something like, well, I saw four on each side, and I know that four and four make eight. You can ask the classmates if they agree or disagree, and then show the domino again for the whole class to study and see if the statement is correct. You can ask them to count by ones to be sure, but I suggest you follow up with a comment like this. You know, it didn't seem like Sam counted four on each side. He says, I saw four. How was he able to do that? Does anyone have an idea about how Sam could just look at this and know that it was four? These kinds of dialogues are so important at the kindergarten level. Not every child will come in being able to do this kind of thinking on their own. But the class dialogue can support this development in a very low-risk environment. There's no grades. The focus is on sharing one another's thinking and collaboratively figuring out whether something works or not, rather than on judging answers as right or wrong. So that kind of environment can be a real breeding ground for the development of subitizing. The domino example showed how perceptual subitizing can be used along with some doubles knowledge for some beginning work with subitizing leading to arithmetic fluency. Another way to use perceptual subitizing in early arithmetic involves combining a perceived quantity, like the familiar four pattern here, with the idea of uh, counting on, like a plus one, plus two pattern. Here you see the use of a card, and the cards shown here are commercially available from Origo. And the first image you flash is a four, and have students think about that and what they saw, and discuss that briefly. Then you unfold the card so they can see an additional dot. Because they've already fixed four in their mind, this helps to foster the idea of four, and one more is four, five, um, as opposed to going back at the beginning and counting them all by ones. So you can actually show that first card, give them some think time, unfold it, and say something like, so what do you think this would be then? Give me a thumbs up as soon as you have an idea in mind. And although these cards are commercially available from Orgo, I don't get any money by mentioning their name. I think that's a pretty good quality product. But I also make a number of these myself, uh, just out of manila folders and dot stickers. You can think of conceptual subitizing as seeing units within a unit. So I can see a whole quantity, and in my mind, I partition it into some small quantities that I can see at a glance. This is this, and this is this, without counting. And then I can use those known quantities that I perceived, rather than counted, to figure out what the whole item is, the whole amount is. And you'd be amazed at how quickly children can often do this. So as I mentioned earlier in the domino example showing a double four, children can awfully, often quickly state eight when it doesn't even appear to you that they did any actual calculations. Um, and they do that through subitizing the dot arrangement of four and then noticing there's two of them and then relating that to their known uh, doubles knowledge. When children leverage perceptual subitizing of two or more quantities and then use that to determine the value of the combined quantity, we call that conceptual subitizing. Now, we are mostly discussing the use of visual images as tools for fostering subitizing, but it is actually possible to use kinesthetic tools such as finger patterns and clapping patterns. For example, if you were to prompt students to count, to, to think about how many times you're counting, and you count six times in a row and stop, and then ask them how many times you counted, I would expect in a typical kindergarten classroom that I've been in that there could be a fair amount of error there with uh, students' guesses. But you'd be more likely to get a larger number of students who were able to calculate that correctly if your six claps had a pause between three. If you clapped three times, pause three times, and then said, how many times did I clap all together? Um, that breaks it up into a known quantity. Three can usually be perceived rather than counted. And that uh, can be helpful for children. Subitizing has been a field of research since the early 20th century. It's not a new idea. But one of the current researchers in this area is Douglas Clements, who I mentioned earlier. He points out here that conceptual subitizing is an important stepping stone to developing number sense and more abstract arithmetic strategies. This is why the Common Core authors have identified it specifically as a starting point to a progression that leads straight to arithmetic fluency. I want you to think for a minute about how your school is defining arithmetic fluency 
Is it using a rote-based, memory-based definition? If it is, it may be really hard for you to see how subitizing is playing a role in that. But if your learners regularly develop personally meaningful strategies like doubles plus one, um, chances are that's the result of subitizing and you may already be seeing some of the value of that. All right, so we want our students to become strategic. We are ready to go with that idea. But what do we do to get there? Rome wasn't built in a day. We need to lay the foundations. I would suggest first that you consider placing in your schedule a daily opportunity to build number sense. I'm not talking about a time for a math lesson here. Rather, I'm suggesting that you have a daily time slot that allows for ongoing number sense and strategy development aside from the flow of units and how they they um, flow throughout the course of the year. This is a specific time isolated from that. It could be at the start of math class, but it isn't dictated by the lesson of the day. Its focus is ongoing strategy development. And one of the things you can do with that time is to foster subitizing. Some people are calling that daily time slot number talks. You may have heard this before, but during that time you help students develop ideas and strategies for thinking about number and especially at the kindergarten level these typically begin with the use of some visual images. The, the quick images that I talked about earlier are one of the strategies you can use. These are a series of visual images. They're shown to students one at a time for a short time. Typically you aim to show it to the students long enough that they can get an image fixed in their mind, but short enough so that counting by ones is not an option. As you choose the images that you're going to show in the sequence, there are a few things to keep in mind. The objects themselves should be fairly simple because you want to draw their attention to focus on quantity rather than on all the variations within a picture. And you also want them to um, be able to have a flow or sequencing where they can follow and get gradually more difficult. So some arrangements of uh, dots, for example, are more difficult to perceive than others. So you would want to take that into consideration, um, both in terms of how an individual number talk would flow, what kind of image you start with in a sequence and where you end, as well as the kind of quick images, how they flow over time. So the kinds of things I would do early in the year would be different than what I might do um, during mid-year. So I have to take some developmental things into consideration. Here you see an example of an image you might use. A circle is a simple object and the focus is on the arrangement and the quantity of these circular dots. This could be rather different if you had a complex picture with lots of variations. For example, if you, had sh if you showed them a picture that involved you know, girls scattered all over the place, little girls, each girl had a different colored dress, maybe different colored hair, they're different sizes then it would be very unlikely to foster subitizing because the students um, are too distracted by all the variations. They're not necessarily thinking of groupings, they're thinking of how they're different. So in these simple diagrams, uh, the simplicity of the design is more likely to draw their attention to number. In the image shown here, you could hold it up for a moment or two, then place it face down in your lap, give the students a moment of think time to focus on that image in their mind. This is actually really important because it allows more learners to benefit from the experience. If you take the first student who raises their hand immediately after you put this down in your lap, you are probably supporting the person who is least in need of this whole educational experience. A moment of think time with a prompt, close your eyes, try to remember the image you saw, get it in your mind, in a moment I'm going to ask you what you saw. It, that can be really helpful to getting a broader group of students to benefit from the experience. Then you can call in individuals to share what they remember and ask the class if they agree or disagree. And the discussion um, can also naturally bring up the qu total quantity of dots on the card or else you can prompt them if the students aren't bringing that up on their own. Be thoughtful about the opportunities that you're using to foster subitizing. Uh, the image shown here fosters counting one by one, not subitizing. I'm not over fond of this worksheet, but if I were to use it, at best it, it could potentially be used to help students make tra keep track of their count since it's so busy, but there's no likely grouping that can result from something like this. So be very thoughtful about the goals you have for the counting exercises that you give. Um, in order to foster some subitizing. 
I mentioned earlier that the sequence of dots are, are of various levels of difficulty, and you have to take that into consideration as you plan uh, to show them a series of quick images. N not all spatial arrangements are easily counted, even for adults. The developmental sequence here of difficulty, in other words, the top one is the easiest and the bottom one is the hardest, this holds true even for adults. Linear arrangements are more difficult than rectangular, possibly because you have to decide where to mentally partition the line into smaller quantities, whereas the top one is already um, potentially uh, partitioned. I can see a row of four on the top and a row of four on the bottom, or I can move to columns and I can see four columns of two items, or else I can even imagine partitioned in my mind two dice images that show four sitting side by side. So just three different ways I just mentioned to perceive the top quantity and so you can get some interesting dialogue from students. The bottom, the linear is a little harder. Circular patterns are harder yet because you have to sort of mentally choose a starting point and remember where that is so you don't lose track. Um, and then the scrambled pattern on the bottom is the most difficult even for adults. You'd have to be pretty skilled at subitizing in order to partition that into some known quantities and use it to determine the total. Use some variety uh, instead of only using dice images. If you only use dice images, the problem that can occur is that students will only think to subitize when they see dice images. And of course, you want to eventually for this path to lead them towards a broader um, transfer of this capacity to subitize to other settings as well. This just shows a few cards that you could show students that have some slightly different formats on them. and. Uh, in addition to that, the eventually um, I've also seen some different color where, uh, for example, if you look at the bottom right, uh, you see four dots. They're all orange, three on one side, one on the other. I could, if I wanted, make one, one of the items that's three green. And so some students could see it as three and one, uh, three on one side, one on the other. Others might see two orange and um, Sorry, I could make two of them green. And they might see two green and, and two orange. So there's some different ways to sort of mix it up a little bit. Uh, also, you can use squares, smiley faces, some other things to mix that up a bit as well. All right, this would be a good time for you to examine your textbooks then. What kind of images do you see that lend themselves to the development of conceptual subitizing? If you feel that your textbook gives limited exposure to this idea, don't let that stop you. You can get index cards and dot stickers and just make a whole series of visual images that you can use to show your students as quick images. Or you can go a bit more high tech and do it on the smart board. Use the visual images to foster classroom dialogue about how your students are seeing number in the images and then how they're using the numbers that they see in their mind to figure out how many dots are on the card. These kind of dialogues can be particularly helpful to other students in the class who are not yet subitizing. As they become exposed to how others are seeing number, it draws their own attention to the value of seeing numbers and subitizing. The last thing I would like to say, however, is that subitizing is a technical term. We don't use that word.